Aussie India. Now, Swetha, can you believe that glaucoma, it's an eye disease, it affects 300,000 Australians per year. 300,000 Australians per year is a yeah. huge number and to raise awareness about this disease, there is the World Glaucoma Week running from the 8th to the 14th of March and actually in this segment we have some very informative interviews about this week. In the healthy eye, a clear liquid called aqueous humor circulates inside the front portion of the eye. To maintain a constant healthy eye pressure, your eye continually produces a small amount of aqueous humor and an equal amount of this fluid flows out of the eye through a microscopic drain called the trabecular meshwork in the drainage angle. If you have glaucoma, the aqueous humor does not flow through the drainage angle properly. Fluid pressure in the eye increases and this extra force presses on the optic nerve in the back of the eye, causing damage to the nerve fibers. Thanks very much, uh, Sweta and Dasala. Yes, indeed, it is uh, the World Glaucoma Week, which is being held between 8th and 14th of March. And this is held mainly to bring awareness in the communities about glaucoma. And to tell us more about this, I have uh, the pleasure of uh, inviting to our show Jeff Pollard, the CEO of uh, Glaucoma Australia, and Dr. Sidwarakundi, an ophthalmologist. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for Thank you coming to much. our show. Thank you. Maybe you can start off with uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, if you can tell us uh, what is Glaucoma Australia? Glaucoma Australia is uh, a lay association. It's charged with the mission of eliminating glaucoma blindness. Mm -hmm. It's been established since 1988 in Australia, and there are other duplicate associations around the world that do a similar uh, job. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, in other places in the world, like uh, Europe, US, and other places, That's they have right. similar yeah. organisations. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, what is what is glaucoma, Doctor Arakundi? Uh, glaucoma, of course, is a very silent disease. The person doesn't know he or she has got the glaucoma. Mm -hmm. What it really does do is damage the optic nerve ever so slowly and it damages the uh, sight from the sight rather than the front. And uh, the patient says, oh, I can see all right and why do you think I've got eye disease? Mm -hmm. But the reality is that if the optic nerve is damaged, slowly, slowly you go blind. So that's the uh, optic neuropathy that means disease of the optic nerve. So that's glaucoma. Okay. Uh, how rampant is this disease in Australia? There are approximately 300,000 people with glaucoma in Australia. Mm -hmm. the, the sad part is that only half of the people actually know they have glaucoma, so they're undiagnosed, the 150,000 there. Right. And it's fairly prevalent. Uh, it's, it's about one in 200 people who are 40 years of age, and it rises to about one in eight at 80 years of age. Mm. So you need to get checked. Mm. So what does uh, Glaucoma Australia do in what are, what are all its major tasks, you think? So the, the major one is creating awareness of glaucoma as a blinding disease and the fact that you need to be detected as early as possible to have the best chance of keeping the majority of your sight for the rest of your life. So if you're detected and treated appropriately, it's unlikely that you would go blind. Mm -hmm. You may lose some more sight across your life, but uh, you should have a, a fairly uh, uh, normal life if you are properly treated. Mm. World Glaucoma Week. So wh when was this started, how this movement started and what's the purpose of this uh, Glaucoma Week? There's a worldwide association called the World Glaucoma Association mm -hmm. and there's another world association called the World Glaucoma Patient Association. Okay. So a number of years they combined and they decided the best way to cover the world was to have a World Glaucoma Week. Right. It started off before that as a World Glaucoma Day and as became, people became more ambitious, we now have a week to do our activities. All right. So it's mainly to bring awareness amongst the community? So uh, The important thing is for people to understand that there are risk factors with glaucoma. Mm -hmm. And so you can have an elevated pressure within your eye, it's a major risk factor. The trouble is you actually don't know that yourself, mm -hmm. so that's why testing is important. Right. But one of the other risk factors that is very important is whether you have a family history of glaucoma or right. not. Okay. Uh, and so you should be diligent in talking to your parents in particular and maybe even your grandparents about whether there was any diagnosis of glaucoma in your family because mm. that increases your risk about 10 times above okay. the normal population. Right. Uh, and that means you have 
if you're a direct relative of someone diagnosed with glaucoma, you have about a one in four chance of developing glaucoma yourself over your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And that's a significant risk. And so those people, it's more important to, uh, than just the general population, to make sure they have regular and comprehensive tests that can see whether they have glaucoma or not. Mm. And so that's again our role to remind people about that genetics of glaucoma so that they'll uh, have a concern about that and go and see the appropriate uh, eye health professional. Okay. So Jeff, what happens in this week, uh, this World Glaucoma Week? So it, it's, it's a chance for the associations like Glaucoma Australia here mm -hmm. to be able to remind people to get on the airways and uh, uh, TV stations uh, like, ours, uh, like yours, yes. uh, to be able to just have people pause and think, oh, may, would this apply to me? Am I in the age group that's more likely to have it? Do I have a family history? Mm. How do I know what my pressure is? And indeed, if you are being treated for glaucoma already, to remind yourself that the treatment and staying on treatment is really important as well. Mm. Uh, as Dr. Arakondi said, being, uh, being treated is really, the, after detection, is the key to actually not uh, uh, having progressive visual loss that may result in blindness. Mm. And so we know that 50% of people who are treated in Australia will go off their therapy within 12 months okay. and so they needed to be reminded of that and so again World Glaucoma Week has that uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. What we're doing with World Glaucoma this week is we're uh, reminding people about their family connections by asking people to host a big breakfast right. in their own That's homes. B .I .G. That's B.I.G. Right. <laughs> so That's big right. means beat invisible glaucoma. Right, right. As Dr. Okay. Arakondi um, said. That's what it means, okay. Yes, as Dr. Yeah. Arakondi said, it's a, it's a silent disease, mm -hmm. so it's also an invisible disease yes, because yes. you can't diagnose it yourself. Mm. Yes. So we'd like to beat invisible glaucoma, and uh, the idea is that if people who have glaucoma host a big breakfast as well for their family, they can tell people about the risk they have as a result of being related to that person. Mm -hmm. And indeed in work groups or in corporate settings, people can have big breakfasts as well to raise up these issues. Right. Uh, and we also ask for people who are uh, getting donations during those big breakfasts to forward them to Glaucoma Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we continue to do our awareness work on an ongoing basis and people can certainly register online. Okay. So we have the bigbreakfast.org.au mm -hmm. and uh, people can register with us. We'll provide resources for them, uh, including invitations, and they can download things off our website to be able to host a successful breakfast. Mm, there you go, viewers. So the website is on your screen. It's very simple, bigbreakfast.org.au. Okay. Um, now, uh, Sid, uh, of course, uh, we uh, all know that uh, early detection is the key, and we said that. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of advice would you give our viewers in terms of uh, detecting this early? What can they do? Some test themselves, or they can go to uh, the uh, optometrist, and once uh, they get their eyes tested, uh, would they get any advice from the optometrist to go and see an ophthalmologist? Yes. I think uh, the first thing is, uh, of course, if the patients are aware of it, mm -hmm. that there is glaucoma and I need to have a check. And then the fact that it can run in the family becomes more aware. Right. Uh, you know, that's where uh, Glaucoma Australia comes in very handy mm -hmm. and very supportive, you know, whatever we say, and they reinforce it. And, uh, you know, I'll uh, give an example or, uh, you know, the, the real story, what happened. Yes. Uh, one of my patients, uh, you know, that, that goes back about 30 years ago. Okay. A retired bank manager. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he came for the glasses and checked and said, uh, you know, you have a, a serious uh, glaucoma, we need to treat you. Mm. I said, okay. It didn't mean much in those days. We didn't have all the support material uh, at Glaucoma Australia province. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, he, you know, he followed the treatment for one month one and a half months, and after that he stopped. And so I said, oh, look, you haven't come for a checkup. I know it's a bit serious. You should take it, you know, you must continue the treatment and come along. No. I sent a message through his best friend. No. <laughs> and then two years later, I uh, heard 
he was uh, pacing up and down to Sydney Eye Hospital to do something. I can't see. Mm. See, it's that too can, late. Yeah, that's right. Too yeah. late. Mm. That's why we want to. Not only we have to say, someone else has to say. The media has to say, yes, there can be glaucoma, mm. and anybody above the age of 35 must have a checkup mm. at least once in two years if it's normal, if there's a family history every year. Mm. And uh, so, uh, yes, uh, that's the basic thing is uh, a detection, awareness, detection, and then maintenance of the treatment that is another very important thing. Mm. Yeah. There you go, viewers. Uh, you heard uh, Dr. Arkundi talk about the health of your eyes. So please uh, take note of that advice. And uh, Jeff, uh, uh, of course, the big breakfast is coming up and uh, some of the viewers who are looking at this program, if they want to come and participate, of course, they can jump on that website which you give, uh, bigbreakfast.org.au. Apart from that, uh, can they contact uh, and get some advice or help from some other uh, way? Oh. Yes, so Glaucoma Australia runs a telephone support service mm -hmm. and uh, people can ring and hopefully the number will be on the screen at, uh, today yes, uh, yes. so that we can uh, have people call us who have concerns, either they're wondering what to do about uh, having tests or if they've had tests and they've been diagnosed with glaucoma and uh, they want some more education uh, right the way through to how do I take my uh, medication better, uh, we offer a full service. Mm. And it's so, free. Mm, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the big thing. So uh, there you go, viewers. Uh, the big breakfast. Uh, put your uh, uh, effort into that because it's for a pretty good cause. And uh, of course, uh, both uh, Jeff and Sid gave us an overview of uh, how serious this disease is and how you can uh, contribute in uh, trying to reduce the effects of that on the community. Is there a final message? Maybe Jeff, uh, if you can give us a final message to our viewers. Uh, yes, so early detection is incredibly important for glaucoma. Uh, make sure you spend some time having your eyes checked just like you would look after other health issues you may have. See? Uh, I agree with that. And of course, maintenance of the continuation of the treatment once it's diagnosed. And of course, uh, when you're not sure, should I be taking the treatment? Is the doctor right? Of course, there you've got every right to get a second or third opinion and mm. uh, please do that rather than ignore it. Mm. There you go, that's uh, pretty good advice. Uh, I'm sure you have noted that advice and uh, we will of course continue to bring you such advice in our future episodes. Uh, uh, Jeff uh, Pollard and uh, Sidwar Kundi, Thank thanks very much for coming on our show and giving this advice. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.